it's not what I initially wanted to do in life was to become this rock and roll singer character. I wanted to be a race car driver. I would uh, drive a top fuel dragster. Yeah. Sounds good. Did you ever do that? Have you ever raced? Uh, almost. I was involved in it for many years when I was 13 to 16. Now here they come, the pro stock finalists. It'll be Socks and Martin's Hemi Cooter against Wally Booth's rat motored Camaro. A big one for both drivers. Socks wants to keep this fantastic win record alive. He knows Wally Booth is eager to spoil it. pit crew guy when I was a young for drag racing, um, top fuel cars of the 60s, and I became a pit crew guy. And at that time, one of the youngest drivers was not even uh, 18 out of high school, and, and he got to drive. So I figured, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And I wanted to do it, so I hung out. What you do is you hang out the pits, you become a pit crew guy, you work on a car, and then eventually you could get in there. I'm off racing, you know, took a trip to Indiana, Indianapolis, uh, not the 500 Indy, it's drag racing. And, um, and we were living at Westchester at the time, near the airport, Los Angeles airport. And um, I went with them to the races and then my mom said, well, newly married, we're going to be living in San Diego. So when you get back, they can drop you off. And that was 1971. So they did. Came back from the races and all of a sudden I was living in San Diego. Did you ever wonder just like me to feel the thunder shaking beneath me? Did you ever want to just go fast? Well, here we are, where it all started. The mom's house, San Diego, California. I got into music, unfortunately, because of an accident. And I broke both my legs and all that stuff. And, and it took about a year and a half to heal. But I pulled my wheelchair up right here and I just watched the cars and people, you know, and then doing my extracurricular to be mellow. But anyway, I'd come out here and think about music and then when I started walking it really got into music hence the garage we played in probably every room in this house was it your father that lived here was he my stepdad ended was up it... oh yeah I bought okay. it for my mom uh -huh. and then she passed away here and then not soon after he passed away here, my brother, who was a big, big problem. Actually, you have the lightning bolt he put up there. Is that it? Yeah. yeah, we haven't taken it down yet. <laughs> that thing has been there for, I, I can't even tell you how long, 30 plus years. That's funny. We actually still have original mailbox. 
We do. We haven't gotten rid of it yet. Yeah. God, dang, this is crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that, um, yeah, you're probably looking around that's still original. Also, the spirit of my parents I wanted to say hello to. Yeah. Because they both passed in that bedroom. Yeah. So oh, really? You should, you should have peace in there. They're not. I, you know, it's where I work and I exercise, so. <laughs> you got peace in there. Yeah. They're very mellow people. Really, and, yeah. And my mom was a total Christian you know, and yeah. church every Sunday yeah. right there, and everybody's funerals yeah. and marriages are right yeah. there. How about that? More entry. The house in San Diego where it all happened. Looks a little different, but this is the place. So the same. I actually have pictures of me right here holding my two custom guitars I had made. I got a little money out of my accident to buy a car and guitars. So I did. So I have my two guitars in this exact same position going, yes, I have guitars, finally. We'd have backyard parties here, keg parties. A uh, dollar a head, girls free. And we'd play and tell people, we are Mickey Rat, we are Mickey Rat. And our neighbors hated us. All of them except the hippie dippy down there. He used to try to get me, get me high. But, and it worked. And then we go back here, and these are the wonderful parties we'd have. We would set up right here, facing out. Kegs over there. Hasn't changed much. There was a barbecue there. We built a barbecue, yes. Yeah, a uh, cement. But it was actually very cool. I mean, I don't know how we got hundreds of people in here. There's a little room here, or there was. Yeah, yeah you tore it down. Uh, yeah, so when we came in, oh, I guess a lot of yeah. the, I guess I, I thought we had four stickers oh. back here. Okay. Um, yeah, see, this is my stepdad. My first real stepdad, he was a pilot. Uh, um, the second, my mom's second uh, husband passed here, but Jim, Jim was his name, but he was a pilot, and that's his stuff. I don't know what that sticker says, but this is his pilot stuff. This place now, the garage infamous, this is literally a rehearsal place. We write the set list on the, on the wall. Don't we have? Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, no way. Look. Uh, well, that's funny, right? <laughs> and look, I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, there's something back here. And that that's my know. writing right there. Oh my God. That's, that's so my hilarious. writing right there. How did you not know the band? <laughs> well, I, so oh, it's, I see it. Oh, you got to get a picture second. of that. That is I, crazy. That's so funny. Oh my okay. God. So I'm going to have to buy that off you one day. You're set <laughs> See, and I, I take uh, for granted, like every time we walk through here, Oh my um, and god. And that was like when you set it out there and I'm thinking, wait, wait a second, this is things are starting to like cool. I guess fall into place cool. a little bit. I mean it's kinda cool. Once I put it together on who it is, um, I am a child of the eighties and so it's like it's neat to kind of put it all together. I had no idea. Like literally no idea. I can't wait to tell my husband. <laughs> yeah. But excuse me a second. My parents actually passed in this room, so. This is baby. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'd have my amps, my equipment right there. My bed was there. As you'll see in the photos, my posters, but. <laughs> big important. Hi. Oh, there we go. Perfect. And a one, two, three, four, five, and one, two. Okay, perfect. I'm, my husband is. Uh, he is a fan. And oh. my, my uh, husband's brother is gonna, like. He's oh gonna freak out God. when he hears the story. <laughs> the cool thing was my my mom was very supportive. She says, whatever you got to do, just do it and ride on. Because I had just come out of my accident. I was pretty much lo a loner guy. You know, I had my friends, but I was pretty much, you know, not too mobile. But uh, once we got to playing and I was on my feet, I mean, I actually started playing when I was on crutches here. There's photos, you'll, you'll have photos. We'll give you me on crutches going in and out of the house with the backyard parties. 
and uh, so there's a lot of history here. This is really, really where it all started. I had Mickey Rat, Robin had his band uh, Phenomenon, Warren had his band um, uh, Excalibur, and uh, let's see, and Jakey Lee had his band Teaser, so we were all friends, we were all playing the same places, we were all uh, 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 friends, you know, San Diego was kind of a mellow place. Because I'd go down to the canyon here, when I first moved here, I had no friends, they were all in L.A. And I'd go down there and trip around, just check the neighborhood. And one time, I saw these guys playing acoustic guitar, and they called themselves the Canyon People, no shit. And they had a park they had built in the canyon where they all hung out, played guitar, total hippy-dippy 70s. And I come from L.A., right, Alice Cooper. And, whatever uh, the city of sin and here I get plotted down in the middle of Hippieville so I'm down here instigating and I run into these guys and they had a place called Presidio Park they called it and I would became friends and and said I play guitar and and so I started playing with these guys and and not much there unless I was playing a uh, uh, Joni Mitchell or Drum Baez or uh, uh, playing uh, whatever, but I wasn't into the Cat Stevens trip, so I turned electric, and that ended right there. But here's where I got my first guitars, first started playing. Everything started here uh, on the wonderful, dangerous hill, and I used to ride my bike outside of this as fast as I could and make that left turn and 90% of the time succeed. But if you were to go down there and see it, it's pretty dangerous, but fun. Fortunately and unfortunately, this is where it all really started. I got in an accident. I got a little run over. I was coming out of that corner right there on my bike Tripping down here, hauling ass, smoking out with some friends. I went to go make a left turn right here, and I saw a station wagon pulling a trailer. And right here is where I had a collision with a car. I saw the car coming. So I decided to go straight. And thank God I went straight because, well, it hit me right here. The car broke both my legs, smashed one. And I ended up laid out right here, sprawled out. And I remember my legs were flipped to the side about that big. They swelled up into my pants. I was just screaming and cussing at the lady who hit me. You fucking whatever you just ran me over I was screaming I tried to get up I tried to get up and they go don't get up don't get up you can't walk you can't I'm like what I can't walk and the weird thing is there was a kid standing in front of this house there was another house here and this kid watched it go down like he was watching a movie and I ran into him years later when the band was successful we came here to play the sports arena or somewhere and uh, he told me, he goes, I saw your accident. He goes, I saw everything. You turn in the car, the car hit you. And he goes, I was shocked as a kid. He didn't know what to think, this kid. So anyway, here we are. And uh, it's crazy. I haven't been here in ages. But I was sprawled out right there and uh, ended up in the hospital for a good six months straight and traction until they figured out we got to do a bone graft and try to fix this guy or he ain't gonna walk and my doctor tried some wacky shit and eventually it worked thank god and then i got into music because of this unfortunate incident a friend gave me a guitar in the hospital acoustic guitar and i taught myself how to play
rock star. Who knows where I'd be today? I was grateful to have him as a friend. A fearless leader. Stephen and I met and we just clicked right out of the gate. Stephen always came to bat for me. And that is how I met Stephen. The house in San Diego where it all happened. It hit me right here. The car broke both my legs, smashed one. There you go. Oh, no way. Look. I moved in 1980, January, to make it in Hollywood, California with my band, Mickey Rat. Whiskey, you weren't ready to uh, take on the world.